Hey guys, how's it going? Robert Warshank here, and it is card revealing season. As we know, the next expansion is going to be Rasta Cans, C Cans Rumble. I said it wrong in the first video. I literally was like, I'm not gonna say it wrong in this video. Said it wrong immediately. It was the first word I said, and it was wrong. <laughs> so, at least I can hopefully say I said it right now. So all future ones after this are acceptable to be wrong. So first card, let's get it. Cannon Barrage, deal three damage to a random enemy. Repeat for each of your pirate six mana. Uh, rogue card, so three damage, random enemies, could hit minions, could hit face. Pirates, six mana. I mean, they released like a pirate already, the two mana two two guy. And um, I mean, that's a decent way to generate pirates as we wrote. As we know, rogues have like a, some pirates, but not like, they're, they're not like, if we think of, uh, what is it called? Like the spark card that uh, priest had, or shamans have and the uh lights not lights justice but you know summons two silver hand recruits for the paladins for one mana so if rogue gets any sort of like you know one or two mana summon you know two or three pirates that are one ones or there's another creature that has like a death rattle effect and then it summons pirates out of it um like the thrasher does with murlocs you know maybe we'll see cannon barrage in some sort of like burst pirate deck or maybe like a mid-range deck and this will be like it's you know mid-game field clear because as we know rogue doesn't really have a ton of field clear they have like vanish but that's not like really clearing that's just you know vanishing the problem for it to come back to turn after that <laughs> um but overall i don't think i don't see this card being like next gen dank tank but i mean for like a nice little meme mid-range rogue deck Meme mid-range pirate rogue deck could be something good. Uh, next card, uh, Hex Lord, eight mana five five battle cry. Add a copy of your opening hand to your hand. So I mean, depending on how good your opening hand is, you get two of them. It's definitely a value tool, and ro and, and we know mages already have a ton of value cards. To be honest, if we think about it, we've got like Syndragosa, right? Um, we've got Jaina. Uh, which, but we have to keep in mind a lot of these value cards are actually going to rotate at the beginning of next year. So they're actually printing, I guess, assuming they're printing like a lot of these kind of cards because they won't necessarily see play right now. But once like Syndragosa rotates out, you know, the, all of the DKs rotate out, you know, this guy, as of right now, it doesn't look that exciting. You're like, eh, you get a bad opening hand, whatever. He's five, eight mana, five, five. You can't really use anything. Like you play this guy and you don't get immediate it's not like you play a card and you know he shoots a fireball out of his face like ragnaros does or you know he gives minion taunts or buffs anything it's like value you're going to receive later um and there's already really a lot of that at the moment so i this card is good will it see play right now probably not will it see play after like after this next rotation um the next expansion when the three sets rotate out not this one um We'll come back to this guy and we'll see if this guy actually sees play at that time in some sort of control mage. And I think he might. Um, but like I said, I think the card pool right now is really powerful. And this guy does not meet the eight mana requirement. Like getting a starting copy of your opening hand for a mage. They don't even need it. Like they just have like a lease packs. Like you just open up a pack and you get five cards. Granted, it's not your starting hand, but it adds a card to your deck, which extends the life and fatigue. But unless fatigue, if a lease is in your opening hand, then straight poggers, right? Uh, the next card we're gonna look at is the Pyromaniac. It's three mana, three four. Its stats are really good, so obviously a great arena card. Like it's a really good arena card. Um, but is it a competitive card? I mean, you're gonna play this guy. Like, where does he fit, right? Like, in control decks, do you really play this guy instead of playing something else for three mana? Because then we control mage, you just clear the board. It's just you know, flame strike, blizzards, meteors, dragon flurry, or uh, furry flurry, whatever it's called. Um, like you don't like and it has the ravens to draw cards so this guy in control mage doesn't really see a lot and if we look at like tempo mage they have the alunith weapon and then they have now the stargazer right and they have book of specters so you're paying five mana to get his effect immediately and you have to kill a minion so stat wise in arena really good competitive play i don't think so i don't think so if this guy said your hero power does two damage instead of one like that they printed one a long time ago that did some shit like that and we're talking but this mm -mm -mm. a reign of toads uh six mana shaman card uh there's been a lot of memes a bit being like you know the spreading plague of shaman but it's not <laughs> it's just eh. I, I mean spreading plague is in a whole nother world man spread reign of toads i don't think it's bad um but i don't think it's anywhere near as juicy as spreading plague i mean spreading plague's just stupid 
So you get three two fours. It's like a mixture of like phantom militia, right? And like a feral spirits because yeah, I mean, you get to pump out. I think, I mean, I think it's pretty good. And they made it six mana with overload three. So you can't play this on six and then bloodlust the next turn. Because <laughs> the whenever I think of summoning a lot of minions for Shaman, I always combine that with Bloodlust and like Flame Tongue Totem and things that like buff the board or transform the board, like the new, you know, I think it's like Storm Surge Gazer machine type miracle worker thing. Um, you know, for each of these cards, I don't know what the fucking name is. There should be like some shit if I'm not lazy, pops up on the left here. So if I didn't pop some shit up on the left, bad for you, Rob, but I probably should have. Um I think it'll see play. I don't know where it'll see play. Maybe some sort of token shaman, some sort of buff shaman. It'll see play. I don't I don't think this card won't see play. Will it be like super competitive, be like the best card ever? I don't know about that. But will it find its way in, you know, a couple decks and not be terrible? Yeah. I mean, there's been so there's in our in our if we go to our Hearthstone collection, there will be cards that we look at and we don't even want to play them even if we could, right? We 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 would literally rather just run like a 28 card deck or just like tear the card up and get no dust for it, right? Um this card, I think, you know, it, it's 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 not as bad as some other ones they printed. Uh, baited arrow five mana deal three damage overkill is the new mechanic which we covered um where if it does over the amount of damage that it needs to do it'll trigger the effect which is summon a five five devil sore um so using this on a minion that has one to two hp left to summon you know that devil sore is good also it just says deal three damage it doesn't say deal three damage to a minion it doesn't say you know it, it can go face so granted doing five mana or five paying five mana to do three damage face is bad you know in some games that burst could actually win you game so i like you know being able to use it on face if need be or of course on a minion which is i'm intended to be used because of the overkill mechanic to summon a five five devil sore and we know how good flanking shot is right I mean, that's found in almost every single hunter deck, if not every hunter deck. Um, you know, four mana, deal three damage, summon a three three is really good. So why not pay one more mana and get a five five if you overkill it? The problem with the overkill is if you don't overkill it, this card feels really bad. So I think I think it's good, and I think it'll see play. I really do. Because Hunter on turn five, what do they have besides Spellstone? And if you're not running Spellstone in your deck, what do you do? Right? Hunters with their 5-5 five, five Devil Sores, man. Right now we have the Death Rattle Hunter running around, and when you pop the Devil Sore egg, they get a 5-5 five, five Devil Sore. And now they get some baited area get Devil Sore. And, you know, there's just so many Devil Sores running around there. That's, that's a lot of Devil Sores, man. I'm, I'm getting uh, PTSD already from the egg. And then now we're going to deal with the baited arrow. And then whatever 5-5. Five, five. I bet they're going to make more 5-5s. Five, watch. Watch and learn. It's like the 5 mana 6-6 six, six flying trample in Magic. If any of you guys play Magic. It's just like, you know, 5 mana 6-6 six, six flying trample. Just send them out there. Yep, got to go in. Uh, Spring Paw, 1 mana 1-1 one, one Beast Rush, Battle Cry. Add a 1-1 one, one Lynx with Rush to your hand. So it's like, um, it's like Firefly with Rush, but with less HP. And it's Beast, not an Elemental. So any like mid-range hunter deck will play this card, right? It's just good. It's just good. <sighs> Looks cool too. I like the artwork. This is, I mean, there's not really too much. There's not too much to this card other than it's a good card, number one. And it'll be found in any sort of aggressive early game slash mid-range hunter. I mean, there's really just nothing else to it. I mean, it's just good. Not like some crazy end game combo card. It's just a solid one drop that goes in, you know, nice old hunter deck. Uh, two mana, two, three, battle cry, deal damage to an enemy equal to your hero's attack. Didn't they try this? Isn't there the, the, the... Sa savagery, right? It's a one mana druid cart that no one fucking plays because it's bad. So now they've taken a one mana really shitty card that no one plays and they've combined it. They've manipulated it and they've infused it and injecting it into this savage striker, making it still not playable. Because no one cares about your equals tier. It's even an enemy minion. It doesn't even say go face. You can't even go face with it. So your best, your best bet, your best bet is you get Malfurion, right? And you get the plus three attack and then you pay two mana and Malfurion's already at. And then you have a two mana, two, three that does three damage. To only a minion. What the fuck do I do with that? This is horrible. 
I mean, I said they're trying to be, they're trying to be like, oh, savagery could be a thing, druids attack, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, granted, granted, if they, if they, I mean, Blizzard, the developers, do some shit where druids have, like, attack, more of it, which would be really bad because they already do everything. So now if they all of a sudden have an attack, they don't even need weapons, they just use their face. I mean, druids are going to be the next, I mean, they're already close enough to Jesus. They don't need anything more. It's too much. So if this card is good, if this card turns out to be good, Druids are gonna be on tier SS. We're talking Kirby level. If you've watched the Super Smash Bros. Um, trailer for Ultimate, super awesome. I don't, I don't. Is it called Ultimate? I'm pretty sure it's called Ultimate. If, anyway, it's super awesome. Kirby's like tier god. So if this if this becomes good, Druid will be tier god. Void contract, eight mana. Ooh, this effect better be good. Destroy half of each player's deck. Ooh, that's not very good. Ooh, why would you use this? Like, if it was destroy half of your opponent's deck, poggers. If this was even destroy a third of your opponent's deck, poggers. If this was destroy the top six cards of your opponent's deck, poggers. Destroy half of each player's deck, that's your deck. That's bad. I mean, granted, like, sure, you're playing against a combo deck and bada bing, bada boom, you want to get rid of combo pieces, but, like, I mean... Is this where it's come to, where we have to play an 8 mana, destroy half of each other's decks to play around combo decks? Is that is that where we're at right now, chat? And by chat, I mean YouTube comments? I don't know. Hopefully not. What is this? Oh, that's my desk. Oh, I forgot the light. There's the fuzzies. Oh, my God. I'm going to... Oh, man. I, I'm so sorry. There's been fuzzies there the whole time. Shh. You didn't even notice until I pointed it out. Back to Void Contract. Um... Yeah, I think this is more like a meme card than anything. I mean, destroying half of each other's deck is just not acceptable behavior. So we're just going to pretend like they didn't make this card and we're going to move on to something like this card. Immortal Prelate. The two mana, one three death rattle. Summon this into your deck. It keeps any enchantment. Why, do, why enchantments? Didn't they always say the word buffs? What is... What does Kingsbane say? Rob, pull that up and tell me right now. I can't see it right now, but future Rob, does it say enchantments or does it say buffs? Or improvements? They can't, they just need, they have too many words. Enchantments, what could that possibly, I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, if it gets silenced, it gets nanade. And a buff paladin is always seen. I mean, this just goes with their buff paladin package with the quest and the dinosaurs and the last Kevladar. And um, I mean, it never really saw play. But it, I mean, it, it's going to be like, it's not, the card in itself is not bad, but if it just gets silenced, it is bad. But buffs getting silenced are bad anyway. So if you were to play any sort of minion and then it gets silenced, it's just bad. But you're going to play a minion that if it doesn't get silenced, it's just really annoying. So, I mean, it could actually see play in some sort of like mid-range buff paladin. I don't want to throw this card out the window yet because a two mana one three isn't in itself bad. Like the stats aren't great, but they're not terrible. But the upside of this card is really, really good. Granted, it shuffles into your deck and you have to draw it later. But drawing like a two mana, you know, let's say five, seven is pretty good if it has blessings of kings on it. Right. And even if they silence it the second time, they're still using a silence after it's come back and they're still having to deal with a card that they don't normally have to deal with. So. I don't necessarily think it's awful, but I don't necessarily think, like, we'll have to see. It's still, this one's a, hard, a really hard one to rate because its upside is really good. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just, the, the, the Paladin deck, if it doesn't get silenced, it's just forever value. It's just never stopping. So, I mean, there's, there's a card at the end that I really didn't want them to ever print again. And when I cover it, I'll go on my little rant about it, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, surrender to madness three mana destroy three of your mana crystals give all minions in your deck plus two plus two i'm tired of these cards i mean didn't they learn their lessons from prince you know drawing prince early granted this is like really bad the upside of this card is is good the upside of this card for how powerful it is when you do this its downside is just as detrimental i mean destroying three of your mana crystals is huge and then you're just gonna get people like hey rob well, why don't you just wait till 10 mana and then you just do it and then you have seven mana and the next turn you have eight mana. And my response is, so you're going to play one or two of these in your deck, right? It's going to take up one to two slots. Then you're going to hang on to this card if you draw it early. The whole game until you get 10 mana. By then, you've probably drawn at least half of your deck, if not more. Priest, as we know, is normally... Uh, 
spell heavy, not minion heavy in almost every single build. So you're going to go and buff like two to three minions in your deck from this ability right here. You're, you're, you're going to play this card, run one or two of them, hold on to it in your hand the whole time, and you're going to play it on one or two minions, maybe three, you know, up, upwards of five. I don't think it's worth it. Just as princes, if you draw prince at the bottom, you know, 10 to five cards of your deck, prince is useless. But if you draw prince in the opening hand, it's really good. But the problem is you can't play this card in the opening hand because if you play this on three, you're going to go back to one mana and your opponent's going to steamroll over you. You're not going to be able to play, you know, like it's just going to take you two or three turns just to recover to play the minions your opponent was playing three turns ago. So, I mean, as good as the upside is, the downside of this card is really not good. So unless there's going to be a way to accelerate mana in a priest deck, which for heaven's sake, holy crap, never do that. Uh, please, no. Uh, this card isn't good. Uh, the bat, I didn't like this card, to be honest. I know it's not going to be that bad, and it'll probably see play, but I don't like this mechanic at all. Um, it's it's too random for me. It, it, it go, it's 8 mana, 1, 1, battle cry, fill your board with copies of this minion. And we've seen the cards like this in Paladin. Uh, Doppelgangster, uh, Serenite Chain Gang. If you can buff this card with cards like Soul Infusion, or the next card we're gonna cover, um, you know it's gonna it's gonna be really good. You're gonna pay eight mana. It's gonna be like a bunch of five fives or four fours. And if there's no minions on the board, it's just really tough to deal with. But if this card doesn't get buffed at all, you know because so, uh, Soul Infusion never went on it, or I mean, guess I guess Soul Infusion it does like the leftmost, so there's not really a ton of RNG there. But it's just like. There's the next card we're going to go over, which is more random than the Soul Infusion. And then it's just like, is Control Lock really going to play Soul Infusions and then the Bat? And they might. And I like that it's not a demon, because if it was a demon in you Gul'dan, it would summon a bunch of 1-1s. One which actually would be a way to nerf Gul'dan, because then it has a lesser chance to summon the, um, the Void Daddies. But, Gul'dan is rotating out soon anyway, so. I don't particularly like this card. Like, it doesn't... Like, where does this fit into, like, the Warlock stuff? Like, if we've seen the past Warlock legendaries, right? We have, like, Gul'dan, we've got, like, Rin, uh, we got, like, uh, Lord Joffers. You know, where does, why Why am I summoning a bunch of minions? They, like, this is a, like, why is this not a Paladin card? Or something like that. It just doesn't fit where Warlock is in my mind, and I don't like that. I don't like that. They're not, like, they could have come up with it. Like, there's a million fucking cool things you can do with a Warlock legendary. It's a Warlock, come on. That's cool shit. And you come up with just like fill your board with copies of this minion. I mean, that's just lazy fucking design. And I don't mean to like be that harsh, but when I think of a legendary minion and I see an effect that, you know, my fucking three year old sister with a box of crayons could draw and come up with, it makes me a little upset. Um, Spirit of the Bat, two mana, zero three. It's doing the whole, you know, spirit thing. Like as we said, they're all going to be zero threes with stealth for one turn so it says after a friendly minion dies give a minion in your hand plus one plus one so that was the whole combination with the bat you know you play this you kill off a whole bunch of minions for hopefully it buffs the bat right uh first of all warlocks trading lol zugo face um i don't know i think this card is i think this card is garbage i don't i don't think this card is good at all i mean i don't know maybe they hold on to it and then they wait for like a defile play right so they go like this it's the zero three needed and then they defile and like a bunch of minions die and it gives something in the hand plus four plus four and it's like you just used a card you it's like you just gave a card plus four plus four in your hand you spent two mana and you had to combo with it and then you look at like paladin and they can just blessings of kings a minion and that's four plus four you know what i mean it's like a shitty shitty buff mechanic for a deck that shouldn't have buff mechanics because it's a fucking warlock deck and not a paladin deck God, they're ruining Warlock right now. Well, I mean, granted, Warlock's been really powerful for a long time, but they can make Warlock powerful, but also be cool. But now they're just making Warlock be bad and unfun. And then this next card triggers me so hard. Timeout, which is what the Blizzard's you know design team should do and actually think of something else. Uh, three mana, your hero is immune until your next turn. So literally, this is just Ice Block, but for Paladins. And we all know how much fun we all had with Ice Block, right? It was one of those secrets that the player playing it, I mean, you felt good for playing it, but you also, the opposing player didn't really feel that great for you playing. It's not a fun card. But right now, granted, Paladin isn't Mage, right? So Mages, as we knew, they were always found in the OTK decks, sort of like Freeze Mage or the um, Quest Mage, where they needed that little extra time 
to pay like for them paying the three mana and didn't have to worry about dying for an entire turn as they spent their seven mana or 10 mana the following turn to be able to either you know generate more ice blocks draw more cards or complete the combo to skip your entire opponent's turn paladin doesn't really have that mechanic right now um you know they have the paladin dk which could potentially go for an otk which maybe is what they maybe this is the card they needed to make that happen but i mean just any card that can't be like you can't just be immune and there's no counterplay to it in magic you know there's counter spells so if your opponent goes timeout you can counter spell this card on the spot at instant speed and the effect won't trigger unless another counter spelled from the opposing player which is the one that originally played the spell is cast so when you when you make cards like this it's really uninteractive for the opposing player to know like okay well my opponent there's no play in the game that could possibly kill them that's really fun i guess i'm just gonna play minions now like it just removes an entire aspect of the game from the player that's this getting hit by this card and there's no there's no counterplay there is zero so i just really really don't like cards like this a lot um granted it's not in mage but i'm sure if they're putting this in paladin people will think of some sort of paladin deck that really benefits from a card like this because this card is very powerful like this card is really good will it see play i don't know due to the fact that i don't know what paladin's going to get and paladin could get some otk potential and if they do this is going to be the next like most annoying card ever i'm going on a rant about this because if it is the most annoying card ever or the mo this next expansion is going to bring a new otk paladin deck this is going to be the card that makes it work and that's annoying um so as i'm all for control decks and i'm all for you know very hard to play you know very think intensive very fun combo decks which there are fun combo decks out there um you know cards like this aren't aren't fun for you like they're not just like both players in my opinion when playing a game need to have fun and this isn't not a fun card um and it's my opinion you know you guys can lay into me with your opinions as well if you totally disagree or agree um but again i'm just reviewing these cards at what i think you know i've been playing card games for a really long time and that you know may means i don't know shit at all <laughs> i'm being serious it's, to this day there's tons of shit i'm wrong about you're always learning but i don't know i just i kind of feel strongly about cards like this right here but anyway Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, as more cards come out, we will cover them as they go. I love to hear your responses, comments, questions, and concerns uh, about everything we cover in these videos as card reveal season is very, very popular and you guys really enjoy it. And I enjoy going over the cards and you know, looking forward to playing with them and all the decks that they fit into as well. So with that, thanks for watching. Catch you on Twitch and or in the next YouTube video. I'm Robert Warshak and happy whatever the hell day it is.